Hi, I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats at Hot Docs in downtown Toronto. I'm here with Kata and Rita, the two main subjects from Leaving Africa. How does it feel to have the film screening here at Hot Docs? I am, I am very happy, I'm very privileged, and I'm also surprised that I have been invited to this occasion. That much I have to tell you. I didn't ever expect that this would happen to me. Congratulations. Yeah, I, I am a medical doctor by profession and, and uh, I, I worked in Finland for 13 years and then in 86 I moved to work in Africa up to 2013. So my main career I have carried out in Africa. And uh, it has been, those years they have been full of happiness, too many challenges or threats. And uh, when I retired two years ago, I never thought that my hobby at the old age would be being, being a movie star. <laughs> but this has been something, uh, I have been able to reflect my life backwards, that this is like the climax of, or summary out of everything what I have been doing. I, I feel very proud. Congratulations. And, and humbled. And uh, to me, this film is very much about, you know, education and, and helping others, but also about friendship between you two ladies. So can you tell me a little bit about how you met and uh, developed this wonderful friendship? Okay. I, I met Rita. Okay, I'm a nurse by profession. And uh, I used to work in the, in the theatre previously. But uh, in 1986, I moved to the rural area which was a health center where you, you were mainly teaching uh, preventive measures like uh, immunization, clean water, skin, and blah, blah. But then during that time, Rita came the same year when she came and she found me with my baby who is now, she's now th getting 30 years. Wow. So <laughs> she's now an economist. Wow. And she, the first thing Rita amused me was to ask me, why am I breastfeeding publicly? And I was wondering that, why is she asking me? Because in Africa, you get the breast and give the child. And she was asking me why I'm doing so. So then that's like something she hit to me. And then I asked her that, what do you mean? And she said, in Finland, they don't breastfeed like that. That was the beginning of knowing that someone comes and asks you that question. Then we started discussing. However, we used to work in the community. Uh, because students used to come there and we used to go to the community. And I was now a main trainer in the health education in the community, dealing with the children at school and whatever. But in that, in that process, became friends. And uh, our friendship even became deeper. You know, we are nurses, we work in rations during the day and during the night. And you come back the next day because we are short of the nurses. So. In the evenings, we could discuss. And then, therefore, and she could come to my home uh, in, the, in the village there. She could, stay, she could go for water. We could, she could look at being curious. That's how we started the friendship. Wonderful. Yes. And uh, what has it been like for you going back to Finland now? You know, how has it changed? Because uh, you've been, you had been living in Uganda for so long. Yeah, but can I just add something? How of course. I, okay. Of course. Uh, what I remember, what hit me in my head in 1986 was that uh, we were a group of Finns. We went to uh, implement a teaching health center project in eastern Uganda. And I found her there being a, a nurse, only knowing about uh, the theater, the operations, but nothing about the immunization or family planning. And I realized that uh, the Ugandan staff had the tendency of uh, being afraid that they, if they have uh, made a small mistake, that they would say it was not me, it was somebody else. And what shocked me in a very positive way was that one day we went to the community to have the under five clinic immunization, and something small was missing in the, uh, among the equipment. And I was wondering that what happened. She said that I did it, I forgot, but I will not do that again. So to me it was like, Okay, straightforward people are also here. So that was the shock she caused to be in a very positive way. And uh, now I was in Uganda for 27 years. 
So it became like another home. I'm a rich woman, I have one home in Uganda, one in the countryside in Finland. And um, Finnish people have been asking me, because I had told them, they had warned me when I left in 86, that I will have a cultural shock. And uh, at, towards the end of my stay in Uganda, I realized that yes, I had a shock, but it went off very fast. But when I went back to Finland, that shock still prevails. And uh, <clears throat> now I have been out from there for two years. I have visited her and her children for two months in these two years. But still I am, like I'm saying in Finland, that Finnish people of 1986 are not the same as 2015. 2015 are more selfish. So the shocks is still prevailing. I enjoy my stay, but I, I am happy to know that I can anytime go to, to back to my other country. And uh, Katja, tell me a little bit about your journey continuing to educate on uh, with the NGO, uh, the people in Uganda. Okay, like uh, you see from the documentary that first of all, I am, I am somebody who initiated that program. Why? Because of my life. I have gone through a lot of challenges, which I cannot say here again. They, they are already in the documentary. But through my work in Kie, where I was, she was there, I used to see children having challenges of early sex, early pregnancies, dropping out of school. So I went to study in Finland University to develop a questionnaire on knowing uh, what the children know, what they practice, and what they think they can, KAP. So during that process, I developed that questionnaire. And when I went back to Uganda, I wanted to study children 10 to 14 years. What are their behaviors? What do they practice? And what do they think is the danger, plus their parents? Unfortunately or fortunately, the children testified in that in those research that they were involved in penetrative sex, and they were so it was so early. They thought that it was not dangerous. And they thought that it is just normal. So the questions, the, the the things that were there in that questionnaire, made me realize that this is a good study for beginning a, a what an educational program. Therefore, Professor Hallman, who was in, 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 in Finland at that time, Professor Hallman, was liking the study very much. But then ISF, International Solidarity Foundation, got interested in the study. And therefore, I started an NGO, a group of people in Uganda in 2006. And then ISF helped us develop the plan for it, 2008 to start a training. And we have been training uh, we start with the children. Our entrepreneur is children. And we want children, because students started saying that at five years, six years, they, they, they do those things like hide and seek, and they do those things. So we try to say that at least children from eight years to, to at least up to 18, we need to meet them. We make them tell us the, their problems, and then they analyze those problems the consequences, and they make solutions with them. But the good thing, we also feed the same thing to the parents, because we bring the parents and discuss the issue. The family issues, then the parents come to understand that the children are involved in other sex. But we have also been trying to tell the teachers that the teachers, these are the problems the, teacher, the children are telling us. How are we going to merge those problems so that we can help the children? But we have also gone into the community to teach the leaders, the community leaders there. We have this system of local councils, we have women groups, we have other, then the religious leaders. So that when this child is fighting an abuse from either other children or other, when she goes back home, the, the atmosphere is welcoming them so that they can report. But you can't teach the child and the parent is not knowing. Because this child, will, the parent will, will deny the child the right, the, the right of the information. So somehow we have been like trying to, like it, somebody said it is like an onion. You keep you, from inside, mm. you are like going outside mm. so that this child grows up with an empowerment that it is able to say, I was raped, mm. I was denied this. And we are trying to make, maximize participation of children, especially the youth. We have a, a challenge in Uganda now that so many youths are there. 
but parents think that they always make decisions for the youth. Mm. And we are trying to say, making the youth make decisions is better for them to develop. So we are trying to make the parent understand that although he has the, the power, still give some power to the children to say what they think, even if you don't agree. You listen to that child, and that child will do something. That's what we, that's how Kafka. And we have also been trying to, there we have been invited for, to, for these agricultural programs where, you know, people produce rice mm -hmm. or produce things for, com for commercial. Mm -hmm. The family participates, but then during the marketing, mm -hmm. it's only one person who benefits. Oh. So we are trying to say, maximize the participation, even on marketing, so that this person can also benefit from what they have produced. So that's what we are. And now I'm like swimming in the water in that program that I don't know, with my age, I'm going to leave the program, but I need somebody to continue with it. Okay. Uh, what has it been like for you seeing this amazing NGO continuing uh, to thrive? You know, I, uh, I am a medical doctor and I was more or less uh, specialized in preventive medicine. So what, whatever she has been doing and is doing, it is exactly preventive issues. And uh, I have felt so proud that I was able to follow uh, their program from 2006 up to 2013. And I saw those revolutionary results among the children, among the mothers, and especially among the fathers. And I felt that, okay, with the prevention in, in the medicine, you need to go even further to the grassroots level, to the home. Because so many things can be prevented from there and they will never need any medical attention. So actually I have learned a lot from this one. <laughs> and where is the best place for us to find out more information on the NGO and the film as well online? Online? Mm. Okay, uh, there is a website that's going to be activated soon. Uh, uh, and that's online. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I will give you my card also so okay. that you can see what it, 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 it is. Yeah. Well, thank you so much and congratulations on, on all of your accomplishments and on the film as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very thank you. much. I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats at Hot Docs in Toronto.